Mr. President, I rise today to continue our efforts to honor our nations and the North Dakota's Vietnam veterans who were killed in action during the Vietnam War. 198 soldiers from North Dakota died while serving in Vietnam. Today, I'm honored to speak about some of these brave men and the stories their families have shared with us. I need to credit David Erber, uh, Her, Her, say, Er, sorry, David, of Bismarck, a Vietnam veteran, for his service and for his years of reaching out to the family members of these fallen North Dakota patriots. Over the past 20 years, David contacted each family to obtain a photo of every service member and a photo of his gravestone. I'm grateful for David meeting with my staff to share his collection of obituaries, news articles, and photos he's collected. The Bismarck High students and their teachers who are also re researching North Dakota service members who didn't come home from Vietnam. And I'm happy today to include research from BHS's 11th grade students about two such men, Gary Myers and David Bujalski. First of our soldiers is John Frost. John was from Hunter. He was born on March 16, 1948. He served in the Army's 169th Infantry Brigade. John was 20 years old when he was killed on December 20, 1968. John was the oldest of three children and helped his dad on the family farm. During high school, John participated in the school newspaper, in choir, in Letterman's Club, a school play, and was a class officer. He was also an all-around athlete who earned letters in track, baseball, football, and basketball. His mother, Lois, still remembers how proud she was the day he scored 33 points in one basketball game in a winning effort. After high school, John enrolled in Valley City State College. He was a quiet, fun-loving boy who dreamed of returning to his hometown to work as a teacher and a basketball coach. John's mother and brother Kevin remember John's kindness, especially towards his grandma Alice, while she was staying with the family, recuperating from breaking her hip. While his parents were out of town, John stayed home caring for his grandma, even making potato pancakes for her. John Greeley, Greenley. John was from Fargo. He was born on January 30th, 1942. He served in the Air Force's 774th Tactical Aerial Flight Squadron. John died on January 7th, 1966. He was 23 years old. John was one of three sons. His brother Doug remembers that John respected authority. John sent Doug a letter stating that the only time he questioned their parents' judgment was when he was buying a lawnmower and they suggested he buy a type he didn't like. From a young age, John had an interest in planes and in the military. He joined the North Dakota Air National Guard. When his parents wouldn't take him to see the Air Museum in Ohio, he hitchhiked there. John attended North Dakota State University and became president of the International Relations Group there. He was named Outstanding ROTC of the Air Force and was the first alternative to the Air Force Academy. The Fargo AMVETS post, founded in 1980, was named after John. His body has never been recovered. Dan Herdebrew. Dan was from Baldwin. He was born on January, or excuse me, July 21st, 1948. He served in the Army's 1st Aviation Brigade. He was 19 years old when he died on March 10th, 1968. Dan and his two brothers attended their two-room school through the eighth grade, and then they attended Bismarck High School. Dan had planned to put his aviation experience to good use by flying helicopters for law enforcement or medical facilities someday. Dan's older brother Eugene was in basic training when Dan was killed in a helicopter crash in Vietnam. After Dan's death, Eugene also served in Vietnam in the Army. Alan Heinz-Peter. 
Alan was from Minot. He was born on May 12, 1949. He served in the Army's 101st Airborne Division. Alan died on September 6, 1971. He was 22 years old. Alan was one of four children. His brother Gordy also served in Vietnam, and their father served in World War II in the Navy. Alan's friends and family called him Pete, remembering him as a hard worker who was smart and who was generous with his money. He was a jokester who liked everyone and everyone liked. His oldest sister, Jean, tells about the time he wanted to watch the World Series, so he smoked a cigarette at school so he could get suspended. Jean said Alan was only five feet, four inches tall, but he had a big personality. Many, many people attended his funeral and still today remember him fondly. Gerald Allen Al Iverson. Al was from Oaks. He was born on May 26, 1947. He served in the Army's 9th Infantry Division. He was 20 years old when he died on November 1, 1967. Alan was the second youngest of 14 kids, seven boys and seven girls. Alan's siblings say he was a fun-loving brother with redhead, red hair and freckles. He loved baseball and fishing. He also enjoyed spending time with his older sibling kids, the oldest in his family, and he wanted to get married someday and have six kids of his own. Al had three months left before he was scheduled to return home. He was the first Dickey County soldier to die in Vietnam. Norbert Freilich. Norbert Freilich was from Belfield. He was born on March 4, 1947. He served in the Army's 503rd Infantry, Airborne Infantry Regiment. Norbert died January 20th, or 30th, 1968. He was 19 years old. He was the ninth of 10 kids, and he grew up on his family farm. Three of his brothers also served our country in the military. His friends, both in the Army and from high school, re remembered Norbert as a friend who stuck by them through thick and thin. His brother, Don, says that Norbert was wounded in Vietnam and was supposed to be on R&R &R in Australia, but chose to stay in Vietnam to help his fellow soldiers. His church in Belfield recognizes him every year on the anniversary of his death. After his death, the Army promoted Norbert to corporal. Gerhard Just. Gerhard Just was from Wishick and was born October 31st, 1924, 25. He served in the Army's 1st Aviation Brigade. Gerhard died on August 27th, 1965. He was 39 years old. He is survived by his wife, Lillian, his daughters, Otika and Cora, and his son, Butch. Gerhardt joined the Army, serving in Korea, and then re-enlisting in the Army to provide for his family. Gerhardt's oldest child, Otika, remembers that it was so important for her dad to support his family financially that after his pickup caught fire and burned the driver's seat, he put a kitchen chair in the cab so he could drive to his second job. His kids have memories of spending some of their last time together working on the house he bought them, installing grass in the yard, and painting the house just days before his deployment. Gerhardt was killed just a month after arriving in Vietnam. Gerhardt's children appreciate how after his death, Gerhardt's parents and siblings always welcomed his widow and children into their family with open arms. Gary Myers. Gary was from Fort Yates and was born November 4, 1947. He served in the Marine Corps' 3rd Reconnaissance Battalion. Gary was 20 years old when he died on May 13, 1968. Gary's father served in the Army during the Korean War and was stationed in Germany where Gary was born. Gary spent one year at Dickinson State University before enlisting. Gary's sister, Linda, remembers him as an outgoing person who loved to help people when he had a chance. He was an honor student and, play, and enjoyed playing sports, 
including wrestling, football, and rodeo. When he wasn't busy with sports, Gary was helping his father work on their cattle ranch. Gary's hometown friends and fellow soldiers report that Gary was killed in Vietnam while leading a mission to retrieve his lieutenant's body one month before Gary was scheduled to return home to his family in the United States. Larry Olson. Larry was from McHenry. He was born June 26, 1945. He served in the Army's 25th Infantry Division. Larry died on June 19, 1968. He was 22 years old. Larry's grandfather served in World War I, his father in World War II, and his brother and nephews also served our country. Larry was the oldest of six children. His sister Rita remembers him as the big brother who always watched out for her and kept bullies away. He was a hard worker and a good friend. Fellow soldiers from his regiment loved Larry so much that they asked Rita to show them his grave. Richard Borgman. Rick was born in Minot and was from Minot and was born on January 23rd, 1947. He served in the Army's 101st Airborne Division. He was 21 years old when he died on March 3rd, 1968. Rick's mother, Anita, and sister, Pat, remember him as a loving, gentle person. He participated in Boy Scouts, worked at the Red All grocery store, and enjoyed fast cars and life in general. Rick left his widow, Linda, and his son, Shannon, and his daughter, Laura. Linda learned she was pregnant with Laura shortly after Rick's funeral. Linda remembers Rick's good heart, great sense of humor, and that he was loved by many. She said she can see Rick whenever she looks at Shannon and Laura, and that Shannon's laugh is contagious, just like Rick's was. Linda is grateful that her second husband, Bruce Sullivan, a Vietnam veteran, adopted Shannon and Laura and lovingly helped her raise them. David Bujalski. David was from Carrington. He was born August 18, 1940. He served in the Army Corps of Engineers, 65th Energy Battalion. On August 15, 1967, David died. He was 27 years old. Davis, David was the youngest of six children, lovingly called Little David, but after reaching the height of 6'2", his family more often referred to him uh, cheerfully and friendly as a gentle giant. He graduated in the top third of his class from West Point and married Barbara. They had a daughter, Elizabeth, while David was stationed in Germany. They moved to Arizona and David became a commander. His first sergeant there was quoted saying, he was revered by his cadre, loved by his students, and respected by his superiors. David felt a duty to serve in Vietnam and eight days after arriving there, he was killed by a sniper. His second daughter, Kathleen, was born six weeks later. David's brother, Jack, also a West Point graduate, wrote the following about his brother. David's life was too short for him to have reached his full potential. We can only conjecture as to what he would have achieved, but we do know that he influenced the lives of all who knew him. Leslie Carter. Leslie Carter was from Jamestown. He was born November 3rd, 1943. He served in the Army or in the Navy as a medic. He was 24 years old when he died on July 1st, 1968. Leslie left behind his widow Marlis and his daughter Heidi. Leslie met Marlis through his brother Douglas. While home on leave, Leslie won Marlis over and the couple later married. A year after their wedding, their daughter Heidi was born. Heidi was five months old when her father died and never had an opportunity to meet him. One of Leslie's high school friends who also served in the Navy, James Bitts, called Leslie Butch and remembered him as one of the nicest, most generous people he had ever had the pleasure of knowing. 
David Cochran. David was from Grand Forks. He was born May 5th, 1951. He served in the Army 101st Airborne Division. David died on June 26th, 1969. He was 19, or excuse me, he was 18 years old. David was one of five children and the only son. He loved hunting with his father, grandfathers, and uncles. He also enjoyed playing basketball and cars. David helped construct a figure eight racetrack in Grand Forks and was happy to be able to race his own cars on the track a few times before being deployed. Wanting to serve his country like his World War II veteran father, David joined the Army at age 17. His father hoped he would not be assigned to a combat unit because he was only 17. But a day after his 18th birthday, he received his orders to Vietnam. Wilbert Fleck. Wilbert Fleck was from Brienne and was born November 22, 1949. He served in the Army's 1st Infantry Division. He was 19 years old when he died July 27, 1969. Wilbur, Wilbert was one of 13 children, seven boys and six girls. Six of the seven boys served in the military. Wilbert's brother and sisters remember him as a selfless, caring person. He was always willing to help out a neighbor. He was dedicated to caring for his aging grandparents, and he was extremely protective of those he loved. Wilbur died taking charge of his platoon after his platoon leader was killed. His sister Pauline says that this was just the kind of person he was, always willing to put the needs of others before his own. Wilbert was Pauline's best friend. Lowell Hardmeyer. Lowell was from Mott. He was born on February 16, 1949. He served in the Army's 196th Light Infantry Brigade. He died on June 10, 1970. He was 21 years old. Lowell was the youngest of two sons. He was a blue-eyed boy who loved horses and growing up on his family farm and ranch in the Prairie Hills. In 1968, Lowell graduated from high school and enrolled in the National Electronics Institute in Denver before serving in the Army. In Vietnam, Lowell had various duties, including rear security guard, walking on point patrol, and radio operator. He was killed when his company came under a mortar attack. Lowell's cousin, Lauren, remembers Lowell as a shy, sweet young man she said Lowell's parents, George and Clara Hardmeyer, grieved Lowell's death until their own in the 1990s. Merlin Peterson. Merlin was from Fargo, and he was born on June 19, 1936. He served in the Air Force's 8th Tactical Fighter Wing. He was 35 years old when he went missing March 29, 1972. Merlin was one of nine children, six boys and three girls. Five of the boys served their country, three in World War II and two in Vietnam. Merlin's brother Bob remembers him as a wonderful boy who people couldn't help but love. Bob jokes that Merlin had personality to burn. Merlin went missing when his plane was shot down by a surface-to-air missile. 14 years later, in 1986, his body was finally recovered. Years later, his family was finally able to lay him to rest in Arlington National Cemetery. These are just a few stories that I hope sharing today with the Senate and sharing today um, on the floor of the Senate will remind us all of the tremendous sacrifice that not only these young men have provided for their country, but the sacrifice also of their family, their children, the wives that they leave behind, the parents that they leave behind, and that it is a constant reminder we must never forget the duty to our country. We must never forget that those of, uh, among us who have paid the ultimate price. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum.